Hello, you're welcome to this new tutorial series. In this tutorial series, you will be learning how to create your first 3D game in Godot 3.53 using only Godot Visual Scripting. Now, this is the first video in the series, and in this video, we will be learning about what Godot is, creating a project, the interface, scenes, nodes, and a general introduction to Godot's Visual Scripting. Now, you can download the free 3D asset pack that will be used for this tutorial series in order to make it easier for you to follow me. Follow the link in the description to download it now. Godot is a free and open source game engine used for creating both 2D and 3D games for both the web, desktop and mobile platforms. Now, this means that you can create and sell your games for free. If you don't have Godot already, you can simply download it by following the link included in the description below. Once you have downloaded it, you will have to unzip the file since Godot does not need to be installed. Once you have downloaded Godot, you see a zip file like this and when you right click, you can be able to unzip it. And when you're, you have extracted the file, you have unzipped the, the entire file, you will have a file like this. So you have the application and you can be able to double click it. When you open Godot, this is the interface you're going to see. First, here we'll have a local project, the asset library, and then we'll have some few buttons here. Now, let's start from here. The local projects are the projects I've worked on before, and you can see different projects I have used, I've created using Godot. Over here, you have your asset library. If you are connected to the internet, you can be able to download different assets from the Godot asset library. Then over here, you can scan for a particular project, but here is the major thing we want to use, the new project. That's how we can be able to create a new project. But here we can import an existing project through this particular place. So first I will go into a new project because we're going to go into creating a new project. So I will click on new project. Now, when I click on a new project, it will prompt me to put in the name of a project. So I will clean that and write first 3D game. All right. So you can create a folder, but when you create a folder, you're creating it right inside your document. So if you want to put in your documents, you can go ahead to do that. But here I want to put it on my desktop. So I can click on my browse and I will go back here and make sure that I find my desktop and I'll click on select folder. So inside there, I can then click on create folder. I need to create a folder called first 3D game. So under here, we'll have the renderer and the renderer here will have the higher visual quality for OpenGL 3.0. We'll have higher visual quality, all features available in compatible with older hardware. So if you want to create for games, that will be running on desktop and very advanced uh, mobile phones, you want to use this. But if you want to go for web games and older hardware, you want to go for this particular one. And mind you, you want to start with the one you want to use. So we are working on a 3D game. We want to work on 3.0, on this OpenGL 3.0. So when I click there, I can click on create and edit. So this is a Godot interface this is where you can be able to create your games and everything you want to do so let's start first over here here you have the main menu where you have your scene project debug and edit and help there and this will enable you to do things like opening a scene create a new scene or, or save a particular scene so we're going to talk about scene very soon so we'll have here we'll have the projects where you can change your project settings where you can be able to change you know the settings of your game and you know different things like your mouse and your window and the name of your game and some other descriptions about it so here we'll have a debug and editor and i'll just leave that for now then over here you have your workspace so the workspace the first workspace we'll have is the 2d workspace and then we'll have the 3d workspace so the 2d will switch to a 2d screen where we can be able to create 2d games and we'll have a 3D screen where we can be able to create 3D games. And here we'll have the script where we'll put in all our scripts. If you are doing both C Sharp or GD script or Visual Scripting, 
Then here we'll have the asset library, just like we thought about in the first part, where you can be able to download different assets. Over here, we have the play test buttons. So the play test buttons enable us to be able to play a particular program. Maybe you have a game that we, ha we are trying to test. You can be able to play it. You can pause it. You can be able to stop it from playing or you can be able to play a particular scene. Then over here you have, you can play a custom scene. So here you can be able to still be able to change from the GLE3 uh, to the GLE2. So if you want to be able to change your game to be compatible with older hardware, you can maybe change it from here. But whenever you change it, you have to close your Godot and open it again. So over here, we'll have the viewports. We'll have the viewports over here where you can be able to create things. And then we'll have the bottom panel where you have things like your output or your debugger. If you have errors in your code or you want to work with audios or you want to animate. And mind you, you can be able to animate right here inside Godot. So over here, we'll have the docs. So over here and here, we'll have the docs. So these docs enable us to do several things. So here we'll have the scene. So the scene enables us to create various scenes. So you can have a particular game made up of various scenes that are merged together to create various levels. So a level can contain a lot of scenes and a scene is made up of different game elements. So we'll have here imports when you import things and then you can be able to, you know, Reimport them if you have some changes you want to do on them. So, but this way you can be able to have the features of you know the thing you have imported and be able to uh, change some few things, make some editing on it. Then you have your scene here, and the scene is where you can create a 2D scene, a 3D scene, or a user interface that's a sort of UI for your game, or you can create even other kind of nodes. Maybe a character you want to just start with a character, and you want to start with a kinematic body. Now, here we'll have the file system. Whatever you import into your Godot will come into this particular place. So we can be able to right click and create folders. So when you create folders, you can organize everything in folders. So you can also open in file manager. This will enable you to be able to open this particular uh, folder right where it is in your file explorer. So over here you have your inspector and inspector enables you to, when you click here, you can be able to have access to other properties of that particular thing you've selected, whether it's in the file system or within your scene. When you select anything within your scene, you can be able to have access to its properties and you can be able to edit what is inside it. Over here, you have the nodes and the nodes enable us to do things like call signals and do some other things, but we have to create a particular scene for us to be able to have access to these nodes and some other features that are within it. Now, one more thing in the interface is the toolbar here. Now, the toolbar enables us to be able to do things like select, we have the move, we can move things, we have the rotate, and then we'll have the scaling. So these are different things that we use for different things inside our work. And most importantly, we'll have the, the viewport that enables us to be able to have multiple view viewports inside a particular view. So we are using the one viewport right now. So that is all for the interface. Now let's go ahead to be able to create a scene. So first, let's talk about what is a scene. A scene is a collection of nodes and a node is the basic element for creating a game. Now over here, we can be able to create a very simple 2D scene or 3D scene. So let's go ahead to be able to create a 2D scene. Let's start with a 2D scene. And when you start with a 2D scene, it will just give you a node 2D. But then you can create a new another scene. When you click here, you can create a, another scene by clicking here, 3D scene. So when you start a 3D scene, it's going to give you something in, in three dimension here, and that is the spatial. So working with the 3D scenes, we are creating a big game. If you go over here, to be able to navigate here, you can be able to use your scroll to move forward and backwards. You can hold down your middle mouse button as your scroll wheel, and then you can move around. You can pan around like this. And then you can go ahead to hold down the shift 
and then a middle mouse button to pan to carry it around. So I'm holding down the shift and the middle mouse button to be able to do this. So if you also want to move around to navigate around your, your scene, you can be able to still use this to be able to go around this way in case you don't have um, the middle mouse button on your mouse you can still be able to use this that is how you basically work with everything here so over here we'll have the special node so this special node is a node and this node is usually the the root node or the main node that we use inside 3d scene and if you look at the 2d you have the node 2d but you can also be able to have different nodes that will start a particular scene so if i click on orders i can be able to create maybe i want this to be a kinematic body let's say a character i can be able to still do that okay so now that's basically how to be able to work with uh, um, scenes so over here we have um to tell you more about nodes you can be able to add a scene node and there is a difference between a scene node and a visual coding a visual scripting node we'll get to that soon enough so over here we'll have you can add a child node so you can have multiple nodes under a particular node so these things are organized in a tree format so that you can be able to have those things under one another so over here you have different nodes this for your camera if you want to add a camera and you have uh, other things like your controls if you want to be able to add control like pop-ups and labels when you want to write something so all these nodes they have different things if you click on them you see what i use for so you see here the label displays plain text in a line so these things are used for different things so it all depends on what you want to do and then you will know exactly the particular node for you to use for that so let's talk about video scripting now video scripting is a way for creating games without writing codes or using node based codes or rather we can call it blocks of codes so if i right click here to be able to add a script i can be able to attach a script here and then i can just go ahead to change this into a visual script when I do that, I can be able to click here and tell you where I want you to save. Right now, I'm not interested in saving this in the place I want it to be. So I'm just going to just let it be. So I will click on visual scripting here and then we'll have the kinematic body and then we'll go for create. So when you click on create, you can be able to have um, different features. So if I click here, this is where you have your functions. The functions like the physics process starts the game so whenever you start the game whatever is the instruction is giving here it will do that so you can be able to drag this out and be able to get a condition and get other things that we'll be able to use so this is how the visual scripting looks like when we enter into how to make the character move and some other features that will be coding will be using this so but basically the visual scripting enables to be able to create games without writing codes but using these blocks of codes and then you see that it's very descriptive and then we'll have the condition there and you can be able to right click and be able to get things like let's say move and slide i can be able to get that telling it what to do so i can have values that i can be able to add in here to be able to move my character when i do something so that's basically all we're going to cover in this particular video in the next video, we'll be talking about how to create a 3D character in Blender using the MPFB add-on. And we'll be creating an entire character there and rigging it and getting it ready for export back into the dots. See you in the next video.